Here is a summary of part one of The Interview by Christopher Sylvester. The Interview, Sylvester states, has been an integral part of journalism for the last 130 years. Any literate person would have read an interview at some point or the other. While some people claim that an interview is an art form and a credible source of truth, celebrities often consider it as an invasion of their privacy. This might be because these celebrities feel that interviews often treat them unjustly. Some primitive cultures believe that a photograph takes away the soul of its subject. Similarly, some believe that an interview diminishes a person's dignity. Now, Sylvester quotes different literary figures who agree with this view. V.S. Naipaul, author of A House for Mr. Bisfas, believes that an interview hurts the person being interviewed. Famous children's book author Louis Carroll never consented to interviews because of his fear of interviewers. He also believed he would be celebrated unnecessarily. The Jungle Book author Rudyard Kipling went one step further. He stated that he found this form repulsive and unpleasant. In her diary entry, Kipling's wife Caroline notes how an interviewer once ruined their day. However, Sylvester considered it ironic that he had interviewed Mark Twain. Like Kipling, Wells also considered the interview to be a nightmare. Though he gave several interviews during his life, he had also interviewed Joseph Stalin. Finally, Sylvester outlines noted playwright and novelist Saul Bellow's opinion. Bellow said that he felt suffocated by interviews. Although Sylvester quotes these writers, he believes that the interview is a useful method of communication. The essay ends with a comment by Dennis Bryan, who believed in the usefulness of the interview and as such the influence of the interviewer. Here is a summary of part 2 of the chapter, The Interview. Padmanabhan introduces Umberto Eco as a formidable scholar with expertise in a wide range of academic subjects. Eco's remarkable literary career has spanned academic texts, essays, fictions, newspaper articles and children's books. He attained intellectual superstardom with the publication of The Name of the Rose in 1980. Padmanabhan began the interview by quoting author and critic David Lodge on Echo's writing output. Echo commented that his writing focused on one thing, similar topics, which makes his writing process easier. He also made use interstices or empty spaces to expand his writing output. For Echo, empty spaces are the time between different events. As an illustration, Echo uses the example of the current meeting. While waiting for Padmanabhan to come over and interview him, Echo used the time productively to write an article. Padmanabhan then talks about Echo's writing style, which is different from mainstream academic writing. Echo, in response, narrates the story of his thesis submission. During the presentation, one of his professors commented on his unconventional style of research that is telling the story of his research rather than focusing on a hypothesis or a conclusion. Echo enjoyed using a narrative approach to his essays. Because of this, he only started writing novels after the age of 50. Padmanabhan then asked whether Echo was bothered by the novelist tag, despite having written noted academic works. Echo replied yes, but even though he considered himself an academic, Practically, he knew he reached a broader audience as a novelist. Padmanabhan then came to Echo's masterpiece. He asked whether Echo was surprised by his reader's enjoyment of The Name of the Rose, which dealt with complex ideas of religion, philosophy and medieval history. Echo replied that it was only publishers and journalists who were surprised because of their narrow view of the reading public. He believed the readers read his novel because they wanted a complex reading experience. Finally, Padmanabhan asks Echo to comment on the success of The Name of the Rose. Echo replies that he still finds the novel's success a mystery.